Hey everybody, I'm Dana. I'm the Director of Brand Communications here at Beyond Type 1. This is Todd. And I am the Editorial Manager here at Beyond Type 1. Um, and we have been covering the big news from today, which is the FDA's approval of the Control IQ system from Tandem, um, which is really exciting. So we thought we would maybe give you a little bit more information, talk about it, and uh, answer some questions that we've been getting on social media. So first of all, what's the news, Todd? Well, the FDA today approved the second ever hybrid closed mm -hmm. loop. Uh, it's Control IQ from Tandem. This one was a little different because they approved the algorithm. The pump was already approved and mm -hmm. Dexcom G6 is already approved, but the approval of this algorithm will allow the pump and the CGM to talk to each other and kind of regulate your mm -hmm. glucose automatically. Yeah, so the immediate news is that Tandem will be rolling out Control IQ, um, offering it to their current customers and new customers in January 2020, so very soon. Um, people who know Tandem know that something cool about that pump is that you can update the software remotely, um, download, you need a prescription from a doctor, but um, many people are already using Basal IQ, which is the low suspend feature, um, which is part of an algorithm and the software that is on the pump that um, keeps you from dropping low, or that's the idea. Right. So that's kind of a building block towards this Control IQ approval, which is um, both adjusting your insulin levels, so it'll give you more insulin basal if you're trending up, it cuts your insulin if you're dropping down, but then something else that makes it um, unique this time is that it also will give you a correction bolus for a high blood sugar. Um, we thought that was really interesting, did a little digging, it'll do up to 60% of whatever your correction settings are in your pump, um, up to one time an hour to try to bring you back down into range. Um, so that's kind of a cool feature. Um, we thought we'd answer some questions that we've been getting on social media. So one I saw a lot today is how much is it gonna cost and when's it gonna be available? So. Yeah, so as Dana mentioned, it's expected to be available by the end of January 2020. Yeah. And I think it's a free software update for anyone who already has a uh, Tandem T-Slim X2. Yeah, Tandem announced earlier this year that through 2020, the new software that comes out will be available for free for customers that are in warranty. So that's pretty cool. I think that's a thing to watch for the future of diabetes technology is as we move towards uh, like software that is also technology, how pricing will change, but cool for now that 2020 we're seeing um, the free software upgrade for current users and then uh, price of getting on a pump for someone who wants to go over to Tandem will be consistent, I imagine. Yeah, I think you just need to check with your insurance and healthcare yeah. provider and I'm sure Tandem has information mm -hmm. on their website uh, uh, as to how you can do that. Yeah, another question that we kind of did a little bit of digging into is what ages is this available for? Um, kind of interesting. So yeah. on the Tandem website, uh, we're seeing, I think you found it. What was the details? It says that it's intended for use for people ages 14 and over. And then there's an explicit warning that it should not be used in children under the age of six. What it doesn't say exactly is the use case for children between six and 13. Our assumption yeah. is that it's not approved for use in those kids. Mm -hmm. um, I think there is currently a pediatric study going on and pediatric approval might come sometime later in 2020. But the important thing to note is it definitely should not be used with children under the age of six and I think people who weigh less yeah. than 55 pounds as well. Yeah, I imagine we're going to get more clarity on that as we get towards when you're getting this prescribed from a doctor and when they're really rolling this out. So um, probably early 2020 we'll know more. I know there were separate clinical trials for adults and adults kind of came first and then the pediatric trial has been going well from what we've heard but um, is a little bit delayed in terms of timeline, which makes sense and how you do this research. But I will say we've seen some comments from parents of kids who are in the pediatric trial right now um, using the system on our Facebook page. And I mean, we've heard really nothing but good things. So we're really excited. I think the response from experts and from community members thus far who have had some exposure to um, this particular hybrid closed loop system have been really positive. And the clinical trial results were really exciting too. I know um, with one of them, time and range was up 11% from baseline up to like 71% time and range, which um, I mean is pretty exciting. And anybody who's working on their time and range or tracking that knows that's something 
Um, I think it was like two and a half hours more yeah. a day in rain, yeah. which is a lot of time. Right. And, yeah. and at the same time, people are reporting that it's really easy to use. Um, and those sort of quality of life factors have been also really positive from the trial. So um, that's been an area of conversation in the community certainly is like, sure, we want tech to improve our outcomes like A1C and time and range, but at what cost to mental health and um, alarm fatigue, all of those things. So we're hearing good things from um, the system so far and everybody's really excited to kind of see how that plays out once it comes to market and is more widely available, but um, potentially really, really exciting. Um, this is also big news in a couple of other ways. Um, so we want to talk a little bit more because uh, the FDA really led with this in their announcement um, about interoperability and the approval of Control IQ as something that is called a controller with the FDA. Um, so we thought we'd get into that a little bit more. Yeah, it's interesting because in approving Control IQ, the FDA has also established a new pathway to approve similar controllers in the future which will work with ACE pumps, uh, automated, continuous, do you remember what ACE mm, stands for? No, <laughs> okay. we'll have to pull a note. We'll pull yeah, <laughs> it's ACE in there, hang on, scroll down. Let's see. That's an alternate controller enabled insulin pump is an ACE pump. Great, yes. so it'll work with an ACE pump and uh, integrated continuous glucose monitor, monitor ICGM, yeah. uh, of which Dexcom G6, I think is the only current CGM with ICGM approval, but other ones are in the process of seeking that approval. Yeah, so it's cool because we're moving towards this world in regulated medical devices and um, moving towards the, what are they, ADE, automated insulin dosing systems, which will be um, with these new pathways that the FDA has set up, a three-part system where each piece is independently getting FDA approval. And the three parts are the CGM, the insulin pump or delivery device, and the controller, which is like the algorithm that is connecting the two and running whatever the system is that is making decisions on the user's behalf. So um, with this FDA approval, they also set up kind of exactly what the FDA is looking for for a controller to get approval. Um, and right now, we only have so many options that have these designations. But I really think the future is moving towards this world of interoperability, um, where you pick your pump, you pick your CGM, and you pick the system that connects them and the algorithm that works best for you, um, which is really, really exciting. Um, yeah, I imagine Tidepool is probably seeking a similar approval from the FDA that Control IQ just got. Mm -hmm. And I know that the Omnipod Dash uh, did receive designation as an ACE pump um, in September, I think. So yeah. that, that might be the next one of these kind of hybrid closed loop systems that works with different algorithms, different pumps, and uh, still the Dexcom for now, but different CGMs in the future too. Yeah, so um, we'll be following along as more information comes out about this. Today was super exciting. We've been waiting for this for a long time. I think um, folks in the community who have been following tech updates in the diabetes world, this has been um, something we've all had our eyes on, especially with such positive trial results. Um, Are so, you going to upgrade? Um, so I am a T-Slim user and also a Dexcom G6 user. I do use Basil IQ and I do like it. Um, but I will say on a personal note, I'm not like a super early adopter of new tech, so I probably will wait and kind of see uh, some more feedback from the community early in 2020. I think I will um, if, if it's um, as well received as everything I've heard so far, I definitely um, will upgrade. I can definitely attest from going through the process the first time the upgrade was was easy for me. Um, just you do need a doctor's prescription, but um, I'm really excited to kind of wait and see. Um, I think that this is kind of the first step in the next generation of things. And um, I hope that I do based yeah. on based on what we see in early 2020. Yeah, I think it's cool. I think the fact that it's going to automatically bolus for you is pretty new and mm -hmm. awesome. I, I'm currently looping, which is not FDA approved, but Sometimes I'm a little frustrated with how long it takes to bring my blood sugar back down to normal uh, with only adjusting the temp basal rate. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really cool feature of Control IQ is that it does have automatic bolusing. And, you know, as always, more options yeah. are better. I think it's really interesting as we're in this world of like developing algorithms to control 
control your blood sugar levels, that there isn't really one right way to do it. Um, and I think that the data is going to show us once we get it on lots and lots of people, um, how slight differences in the way you make adjustments to something like a basal rate or a correction factor or how you predict where your blood sugar is going to be in 30 minutes like all of those small tweaks and the math and development that goes into that um like we just haven't tested at scale yet um so the idea that there's going to not be one answer to an algorithm that works for everyone but that there are multiple out there i think is really cool um i also think like sky is the limit in in terms of where data takes us with uh the automated insulin delivery um and like more data machine learning in the future i mean that's not part of this but like it really like lays the groundwork for all of those things to start figuring out um what smart insulin delivery could really look like at scale it's an exciting time to have diabetes. <laughs> That's true. I think it's true. Um, we'll see. Um, All right. Cool. Well, thanks, everybody. If you have more questions, let us know. We can work to get them answered. Um, if you have questions for Tandem or for researchers who are experts in this field, let us know. Ask in the comments. We um, would love to ask them on your behalf. And more to come. We're really excited and hope you are, too. Let us know what you think. Um, I'm Todd. This I'm is Dana. Dana. This is Luna. She's not at the Beyond Type 1 office every day, but it's a special Friday holiday occasion. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.